First, though, we go over to the newsroom and join Lynette Liscoe. Good morning. Labour has won the Walton by-election, easily beating the militant-backed candidate into third place. But a big swing to the Liberal Democrats cut Labour's majority by 16,000. Labour won with more than 21,000 votes, a majority of nearly 7,000 over the Liberal Democrats. The Conservatives came fourth, losing their deposit. Labour has revealed that it's investigating militant infiltration in Walton, and a number of Labour members could be suspended. Neil Kinnock says the inquiry will be fair but firm. We've made it clear from the outset that people who worked for uh, and were involved in the campaign of the militant candidate would be dealt with under the constitution of the Labour Party. And that's what we shall do. Clearly, we've got quite a lot of evidence that comes from the by-election and everything going on around it. And that will be acted on with complete fairness, but obviously very firmly. European foreign ministers are meeting in The Hague this morning to discuss a plan to send a team to monitor the ceasefire in Yugoslavia. Slovenia has ignored an ultimatum to pull its troops off the streets, but it has promised to release Federal Army prisoners about now. As last night's deadlines passed, Slovenia's uneasy peace continued, but Belgrade's demands remained unimplemented. The only concession by the rebels, the release of 2,000 Federal Army prisoners. But contrary to Belgrade's central requirement, Slovenia's troops are still on the streets and their government is suspicious of the Federal Army's motives in pulling back. We are afraid that, that uh, moving back uh, to the barracks is just an attempt to reconstruct their forces and to attack for the second time. Slovenia, still reeling from the last wave of fighting, now awaits Sunday's deadline when Belgrade has asked it to vacate occupied border posts. In neighbouring Croatia, there have been clashes between Croats and Serbian nationalists involving several casualties. Yugoslavia will be on a knife edge this weekend. Police in Newport are surrounding a car and negotiating with a man who's holding a hostage at gunpoint. The hostage, Donald Stewart, was kidnapped more than 24 hours ago. The police say they're hopeful the gunman may give himself up later this morning. In the past few minutes, the Dutch Appeal Court has overturned the 18-year jail sentence given to a Belfast man for the IRA murders of two Australian tourists. The court decided that Gerard Hart's involvement in the attack in the Dutch town of Roermond last year had not been conclusively and legally proven. He remained in custody pending the outcome of a separate trial for IRA membership. That's all the news for the moment. More news at 11 o'clock. And now the headlines in the southeast. Staff at several London hospitals are holding rallies and mass meetings at lunchtime to campaign against cuts and job losses. It comes on the 43rd anniversary of the National Health Service. The body of a 20-year-old man has been recovered from a lake near Harlow in West Essex. Divers were caught to Rushy Mead Lake at Nasing after Alan Rose from Woodford Green disappeared while swimming there. A policeman is in hospital after being stabbed during a drugs raid on an East London housing estate last night. Thirteen people have been arrested in the raid on the Pembry estate in Hackney. A man and a teenager have been airlifted by helicopter from their motor barge, which sank last night in Essex. The pair, who were unharmed, were picked up near the River Crouch estuary off Clacton. The Hammersmith flyover in West London has just reopened following a fatal road accident involving a tanker. The tanker careered across both carriageways, blocking the A4 flyover in both directions. And for more news and travel in your area, tune in to your BBC local radio station. Finally, the weather for today. It'll be hot and sunny with a maximum temperature 28 degrees Celsius. That's 82 Fahrenheit. Hello. Another fine and very warm day, but just the one on the satellite sequence. You can see the breakdown coming up from the southwest. That thick, ugly cloud there does have rather a lot of rain beneath it. Over the sea at the moment, but uncomfortably close, heavy rain too, to Cornwall there. And that's the position we have today. Most of, well, m most of it, almost everybody dry. The Scillies may be getting the odd spot of rain, but that thunder thundery area, uncomfortably close to the far southwest of England. It will be for much of the day. And it'll tend to move northwards as we go through the latter part of the day. This afternoon, one or two heavy showers, possibly thundery, breaking out, especially in southern and southwestern parts of Britain there. The rest of us staying dry. Rather a lot of thin, high cloud at times, but mainly sunny. 
A stiff easterly breeze, especially over the hills in northern England, but stiff in many places. Those are the average winds at lunchtime today, and those are the temperatures that result from that easterly wind. Pleasantly cool along that east coast with the lowest pollen counts, high pollen counts in many central and western districts. Then this evening, a band of thunder rain gradually moving northwards across the country during the course of the night with clearer weather getting back to the far southwest and that clearer weather spreading northwards over England and Wales during tomorrow but a very sticky night to come tonight and that's the picture tomorrow with that band of thunder rain moving northwards. BBC One goes on safari this Sunday beneath the waves off the Welsh coast with Jill Dando. Basking sharks eat only plankton, do they? That's right. Oh, good, please do that. On a noisy Scottish cliffside where thousands of seabirds have made their home. Driving the automobile in Devon. Wildlife spotting in the heart of Leicester. From oil rigs to mountaintops, Julian Pettifer explores the British Isles. Safari UK begins this Sunday at 4.55 on BBC One. David Vine will be taking a rather more gentle safari in half an hour when he continues his series on horseback with a look at riding as a holiday activity. Good morning. From the birthday newsroom, the main story this morning. It was 37 years ago today that BBC TV broadcast its first news bulletin. The other headlines this morning from Quentin the Bear. That was completely useless, completely useless. Lynette Lithgow thought she might have had an hour off at 11, and you could have been there, but no, that was useless. Go and find me a news flash. Well, and while he does that, I shall tell you the other main point. Um, play days today, because it's Friday, stops at the tent stop, so don't miss that. And, of course, we've got your birthdays too. And here it is, hot off the teleprinter, the latest birthday news. It's been announced that this is the last birthdays for the whole of the summer. Bit of over-dramatising things there, I think, Quentin, because they are still going to be here in BFT. It's just it won't look like this anymore. Anyhow... Let's press on, shall we? Get the real work done. Um, go and grab some cards, and I shall get the ones off the pile here. The first one is for Liam. This is Liam Allgood, who has a birthday today. Three years old, so happy birthday. Lots of love from Mum, Dad, and baby brother Jordan. So happy birthday to you. A big fan of Fireman Sam. Hence his Fireman Sam sweater on that there card. So happy birthday to you. Now, what else have we got here? We have King Rollo, who hasn't been on the telly for a while. Here to say happy birthday to Simon Harries, who is three today. Lots of love from Mum, Dad, and Dominic. So happy birthday to you too. Ha ha! Jim lad. We have a pirate here. Uh, with an eye patch on, in fact, and underneath the eye patch is a picture of Scott. This is Scott who's four. Uh, pictured here with Luke. Mum and Dad want to say happy birthday, as does Abby, who helped make the card. So thank you for that and a very happy birthday. No impressions of Pingu, but that's because he doesn't say a lot. In fact, you could do a very good impression of him, Quentin, I think. Matthew Hounslow of St Albans, a very happy third birthday to you. There he is with Adam, who wants to say happy birthday, as do Mum and Dad. So have a brilliant day to you too. Now, magic wand. Look at this. We have here a wizard-type figure stirring a cauldron, and inside is Daniel Lee Clark, who's leaping up with his drill, because it's his birthday today. Happy birthday with lots of love from Mum, Dad, Sister Stacy, and all the rest of the family too in Nottingham. Stand by. More birthday cards coming up after the tenth stop with Play Days. Play tent.